Hi guys, Master Send in here. How are you all doing? Hope you're having a great week. Um, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today we are going to play some more Magic the Gathering Arena. So stay tuned. So, I want to tell you about two decks I've been working on. One is a Plains deck. The other is a plain swamp deck. Now, the idea of both of them is to gain life, and then you put a 1 1 on particular creatures. So, my plains deck, for instance, I run loads of cards like a Johnny Welcome um, and a Johnny Pride Mate. Now, when um, you gain life, a Johnny Pride Mate will get a 1 1 on him. So, with Ajani's Welcome down, when a creature enters the field, you gain life. So that's already 1-1 one, one going on Ajani each time, uh, Ajani's Pride Mate, each time that you lay a creature. Now, I've got uh, a horse, I can't remember what it's called, but I'll point it out um, when we get into the game. Um, when you place him onto the battlefield, you get to select a colour. And when you place spells of that colour, you gain life. So again, that life is going on to Ajani's power and toughness. So, then I've got other creatures that have lifelink. Other creatures that when enter will give you life. Other cards that will give you life. It's all built around the Ajani pride mate. However, now this is where the problem lies and why I built the Plains Swamp deck. With Ajani gone... The whole thing just goes out the window. It's um, not powerful enough to stand up on its own. I have a couple of cards that stops attacks and blocks and stuff like that. A couple of cards that exiles other creatures. And a couple of cards that gives your cards indestructible. However, it doesn't hold up to particularly some of the cards with trample and stuff like that. Anyway guys, let's get into the video and let me show you my new deck. Right then, so that's my new deck. Zero Phoenix. And that's a pretty cool name actually, I've got to be honest. Right, so I decided to keep this hand just because there is a couple of cards I can play. Now that Diamond Mare is that horse card I told you about. So. I think firstly I will play a plane then we get down to this healer's hawk just because I wanted to to keep the attack on early and I needed a creature down just so that person couldn't feel they can just build up so I play that one and then I get another planes down and I play my bishop soldier another creature with life link um, it's also 2-2, two -two, so it just, you know, it keeps the pressure on this guy nice and early. And then I played another one, just again to keep that pressure on. It's all ready for when a Johnny's pride mate comes down. Um, I'm, I'm already set up to just keep giving him health. Just keep getting health, keep giving him 1 1s. Now, this one is particularly good. It starts off as a 1 1, but it only costs one plane. Um, but if you have three, if there is, sorry, three or more creatures, including herself, on the field, she will become a 2 2 and you gain one life. Now, this idea of this card is literally because it brings two creatures out at once. When the Johnny's welcomes down, we have a Johnny's pride mate on the field. Um, that's two life you will gain because that counts as two separate creatures, and so a Johnny will get um, two one ones on him. On him. So as you can see, I'm already on 27 life. That person's only on 16. So it gets the planeswalker down, but I don't want to take the risk. Then planeswalkers can change games, and quite often I'm in complete control, and then they play 
some planeswalker that drives me insane. Um, so I decided attack the planeswalker rather than going for the life points at this point. I went to check see if I could have anything that could banish or exile a planeswalker. I didn't. I had nothing that could destroy it. So I went with the option of just attacking the planeswalker on this round. Because with three people, uh, four creatures on the battlefield, I thought uh, I'll be able to withstand anything they put down at least for another turn or two. But. That card I love. One of my favourite cards. It's in all my planes decks. Just because it taps something down when it attacks. You can use it either to get rid of the strongest things they can't block you, or to get rid of the weakest things so the strongest one can block you to try and bait them into trading one for one or something like that. And also if you've got a card that will then do further damage on top of it, it's a good way to try and bait them into blocking saying, look, you can choose not to block, but I'm attacking with it. Luckily I got that just in time, Luminous Bonds, because that creature already become a 6-7, so I go here, all out attack, I tap him down anyway because the ability just made it so. And this guy obviously can't figure out what to do right now. Now he made a really cool move there. Got rid of the strongest creature on my side of the field. And I do particularly like that, um, I can't remember what it's called now, Werewolf's Bite or something like that. Now, he bounces that back to his hand. However, I wasn't too bothered, because I've got another creature that could seal it when he brings it back. Go over, literally bash, bash, bash. Now, even if he does bring that creature out, which I think, or I think he does, um, I've got more on the field than he has. So, like, literally block one, block anyone you want, and I am going to get that last four damage. And he's starting to figure that out now. But luckily. I have this seal away, so I think, I think I use, no, I play that instead. And, oh yeah, and then I played that one. I thought, you know, screw it, over, uh, just fill the battlefield so he can destroy one creature, doesn't make a difference. Oh, and then, um, yeah, I, I got my cats out, and I, uh, you know, he blocked, but that's, uh, Minus one in the end. And I win. So the deck is working. We did not see a Johnny's Pride Mate um, that turn. However, I will include some footage in here. Just to show the capability of that card. Because it is a really good card. I run three in this deck. I'm thinking of going up to four. But I'm running three at the moment. Um, so guys, what did you think of that deck? You know... As I said, you didn't see all the cards, and I will play it in future videos, because um, I've still got a lot of work. This is no, by all means not the finished article. So, put your comments below, and um, any suggestions you want to make, just uh, just let me know. As always, I try and open a pack of cards when we play, so while I'm talking, have a look and see what cards I've got. Um, I've got a couple of planes that I'm thinking of maybe including, but they're ones I've already got. Anyway guys, as I said, put comments below, let me know what you thought of this deck, let me know how I can improve upon it, um, what you would do differently, what you might add, I mean obviously you don't know what's fully in my deck, and I will make a video and share my cards and show you my decks, um, and we go through each individual card, but I feel that might be a bit long winded, might be a bit boring, so that will be for a future date, particularly when I'm kind of starting to finalise my final piece, um, but yeah, comment below. Um, let me know what cards are good and any cards that you suggest and I use, I will do a shout out on my next video or whenever um, I 
can, when I use that card, just give you credit for it. So, you know, comment below. Let me know what cards are good. If I use it, I'll give you a shout out. Because, you know, after all, it is all a team effort. I'm hoping that you guys will help me and, you know, help me improve. But with this deck um, and my other one that I'm going to show you in a minute, we have, uh, well, I have managed to become Silver Tier 1, which is the highest I've ever been on this game. So, it's working. It is. Anyway, um... Let's have a look at the next deck, see what that one's like. Right, guys, let's uh, check out my other deck called Life and Death. Um, before we do, I just want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers by the name of Donkey Trap589. Just want to say thank you for all the comments you have been leaving on my videos. You've left uh, quite a few comments. Um, and, and they're really helpful comments, you know, you've really motivated me to keep trying harder, to keep doing what I'm doing. So guys, please leave comments, just support me, really motivates me to just keep going. That being said, let's crack on. So my life and death 2, and the reason it's called 2, don't ask why I've done, I spelled it that way, but the reason it's called 2 is because there is a different version. But I found that it was... Um, too heavy on lands that I on one game pulled I think seven lands in a row so this one I decided to mulligan now there's some good cards there but the creature card that I can play was a 4-4 and also there was two swamps I couldn't even play that 4-4 unless I started getting lands uh, sorry planes so I mulliganed that one, even though it's a really, really good card. I got rid of that one because it's too expensive earlier on. I've got a couple of, you know, cards that only cost two to play. So I thought I can get potentially three or four down on the uh, the field quite early on. Particularly if I've got one of each colour of uh, lands. I've also got um, two Ajani's in my first opening hand. I decide to not play that one first because I don't want it to die. It has a purpose and uh, I need him to stay along as long as possible. And I need to be gaining health while he's staying around. Now this is a particularly good um, uh, planeswalker because it will create these walls and also everything has hexproof now. Well, I think only the player has hexproof. So I'll play a journey this time. Now them walls can only block my attacks. They cannot harm my creatures. So they can't kill me. And they also can't attack because they're defender cards. If they've got them little sort of turret looking tower things on the corner. They can only block. So this one's good. Because when he enters they lose life and I gain life. All part of that gaining life sort of you know the life and death sort of idea of this deck and so now I've got four card uh, swamps uh, sorry got total four lands pretty much two of each there's not really too many cards in my deck I can't play um, I haven't really gone for too many higher than five cards um, just because I want it to be fast and as I said the focus on two cards that are two twos and um, uh, Three two and they one cost three. I think it's one swamp and then two others and um, a journey who's one plane and one other And now with my fifth land this one allows me to scry. Um, I've also got a cool instant. This one's cool because it exiles all attacking creatures. I am not, can't remember. I think I keep it on top because, you know, thinking about it, at it now, probably not the best move because he has nothing that can attack. But it's always good to have sort of there. So he's going to defend them. No one dies. Nothing happens. I've just tapped down a couple of creatures. However, the other ones are getting around the side. Okay, and that's a card that gives all my guys indestructible and gives them plus two. 
So I think I do play it, and I'm not for the indestructible really, it's literally for the plus two. No, it's that one, so I'm sorry, I apologise, that one's just target creature. Now I don't know if I actually, yeah, I think I do put that on his um, zero four wall. Now go all out attack. And then obviously that one gets that. They get their life links and then watch a journey. Sorry, the uh, frame rate dropped a little bit there. The, my internet must have been playing up when I recorded this. But look, he's already, I've got two four fours on the field now. And every time um, he attacks, he's going to create more cats. And if he doesn't kill them two cats, I'm all good. But, you know, there's nothing this guy can do. He's literally out of the game now. Um, unless he can get down, what, another four? And so I win again. I mean, this time he quit early, but let's face it, it's, he, he still lost. Um, I still won. There was no way out of that. He just quit before I got the final blow, which I was going to get. Anyway, guys, let me know what you thought of this um, deck. You got to see a little bit of a journey in action. Um, you did not get to see my Bloodthirst Vampire, who is exactly like a journey, but a swamp version. Um, but, guys, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this deck. Um, again, any suggestions you can make that cards to include in this, or maybe... Just cards that I can increase the volume of them in. Just let me know. And if I do go with the cards you suggested, I'll give you a shout out. Um, just put some comments below. Let me know. So I think we'll leave it there today, guys. Um, thank you once again for tuning in to my video. Um, if you want to see more Magic the Gathering Arena, drop some comments below. Anyway, guys, if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. It means so much to me. It really supports me. Every time I see my subscription number goes up, it just means I'm doing something right. But I have to be better. And I'm always trying to improve what I'm doing, whether it's the quality, the gameplay, the layouts, any techniques I'm using. I'm always trying to improve. Um, any suggestions on how you think I can improve further, please put them below. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, guys. Please subscribe if you can. Don't forget to like my videos if you've enjoyed this. Um, ding that little bell as well so you can get notifications of every time I upload. I upload twice a week, Tuesdays and Fridays. And as always, I ask all the time, put comments at the bottom, even if it's just to say, Hi Mars, how are you doing? And I'll reply. i reply to all my comments. Anyway guys, thank you very much. Have a good evening. And as always, take care of yourself. Bye.